NDP Deputy Leader Saul Mamakwe addressing the NOMA conference. And others that provide service for the people in the North. This past Wednesday, I was here uh, when you were doing the opening. And uh, when I walked in, I heard a, uh, an elder talk, sing a, a drum song and a water prayer that she was doing. I thought I was at a chief's meeting. <laughs> and then uh, another song came on after that. Another song came after that. Uh, but it, it was old Canada. I didn't feel as much like that. <laughs> you know, um, you know uh, as First Nations people, we always use humor you know, as a way of survival. And, um, and I think uh, that I was only in Thunder Bay during that time because uh, in the next hotel, I was at this gathering for, uh, I did a speech over there on uh, families were gathering for the seven youth inquest that was happening. The seven youth inquest uh, came out in 2018 and uh, whereby you know, we had seven youth that died in Thunder Bay coming out to high school. And uh, so they were kind of outlining, you know, what has happened in the 145 recommendations that happened, whether it's from the municipalities, whether it's from the province, whether it's from the Fed. So <laughs> that's, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's the only reason I was here, and uh, I happened to know that uh, my leader was here, so I came to support her. But, but I think it's um, it's important for me to, um, you know, uh, me as a First Nations person, as a First Nations MPP, it's um, I see things through a different lens than what you may see. When I'm at uh, Queens Park, you know, four days a week, it often uh, feels like uh, sharing. Our truth-telling stories falls on deaf ears sometimes, especially on the important issues like health, issues like housing, issues like justice. I know uh, when I travel the north and travel Kuwaitno, housing is one of the most important yet neglected problems in Kuwaitno today. Families live in overcrowded conditions with multiple generations crammed into two bedroom homes. You know, this overcrowding leads to mental health issues, addictions, among other things, but also tragically, you know, suicides. I think one of the hardest things in the last few months uh, was to attend a funeral of a 12 year old girl that died by suicide. And, you know, it was hard to see, um, it was hard to see, uh, you know, uh, parents consoling their daughters, their sons, who are the friends of that young girl that passed. Uh, and also, I also know that, uh, you know, through my lens, you know, that the reality is many policymakers who aren't from this part of the province do not get it. And many never will. But it's my job, it's my role to be able to share those truth telling stories. If we want to build homes, we face so many challenges. You know, as an example, there aren't enough lots on reserve or infrastructure like water and sewer systems. Sometimes there isn't even enough energy to build new homes. I remember in my home First Nation, when we were still on the diesel generator, all we saw was addition to homes for eight years because there was no hydro. But things are changing with energy. When we talk about on reserve, you know, when we try to add lands to the reserves, we have to navigate a very complicated process 
with the province, with the feds. It's called the ATR process, addition to reserve. You know, when I think about it, when we live in it, that's colonialism, that's oppression to its fullest, fullest extent. In 2024, uh, you know, what we, what most call the, uh, the most progressive generation ever, or as kids call it, woke. First Nations are still beggars on their own land. Crown lands are stolen lands, and there's no way around it. I say that because uh, did you know that, that Treaty Number 9 is the only number treaty from Treaties 1 to 11 where a province is a signatory? That province is Ontario. But we, as First Nations, don't benefit. Instead, it is often the opposite, where the feds and the province are reaping the rewards. This is nothing new. I used to be part of it when I was in health. I used to uh, be part of this board, uh, so called First Nations Self Authority in Sulaco. And I remember uh, looking at the financials that time, and I remember we were paying $1 million per year in rent. And all I saw was an Ontario business number. I often wondered who is behind that number. I know it wasn't us. It wasn't our people. More and more today, I see partnerships with First Nations by non-Indigenous people, non-Indigenous businesses. But often it's just a disguise for economic reconciliation, where costs are constantly increasing and our people are paying the price. Go. One minute. You cannot use this just as a, you cannot use us just as rented feathers. It is important to hear the truth before we can change things. Truth before reconciliation. All of us in the room are not responsible for this. We're not, we're not responsible for the colonialism, the oppression that happens, but it is our responsibility to make it less. Don't be colonial. I say that in a good way, not in a bad way. We need real opportunities and partnerships with companies that share common values, common visions. And I think um, the only way to do this is to dream big, but start small. Try new things and move beyond the status quo. Most importantly, we must remember the strength lies in the differences. Not the, sim not the similarities. Unity and diversity isn't just a slogan. It's a foundation for building a brighter future for all. When we unite in purpose, in principle, there is no challenge too great. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much.